Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizer Education. Um, I would like to continue uh, using vectors as the main tool in solving problems. And uh, today I will have two very simple problems about vectors. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems. It's presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, this one, unizor.com, because every lecture has notes, and notes are basically like a textbook. Uh, quite detailed, um, rigorous uh, explanation of basically the same thing which I'm doing uh, at the whiteboard. So you can have basically a, uh, an advantage of watching the lecture or reading the textbook. Um, now also the unizor.com is a totally free uh, website without advertisement. You don't really need to sign in if you are uh, studying just by yourself. Um, what else? Yes, uh, there is a prerequisite course for this and I'm definitely using all the concepts which uh, were presented in that prerequisite course. This course is called Mass for Teens. So, um, obviously these problems, most of the problems which I present in this course, are based on theoretical material presented in the uh, course called Math for Teens. And on the same website you can find other courses as well, like Physics for Teens, for example, or Relativity for All, and some others. Alright, so let's solve a couple of problems. Again, simple problems. Uh, okay. Now, uh, let's assume you have a three-dimension, three-dimensional three space. And there is some vector. So this is x, this is y, and this is z. So, correspondingly, this is the x-coordinate. So, let's call this vector v. So, that would be v1, that would be v2, and this would be v3. So, vector v has certain coordinates, which are not known. What is known is the length of this vector, Let's call it L. And what also is known, you see these three angles, one with X, another is with Y, and third one with Z. So let's call them alpha, beta, and gamma. So I know cosine alpha, cosine beta, and cosine gamma. So I know the length of the vector and angles it forms with each axis of coordinates. What I do need, I need its coordinates, v1, v2, and v3. Okay, how can I approach it? Well, first of all, any problem, whatever I present, it makes sense if you're watching it um, uh, as, as a video, to pause the video and think about this yourself. If you are reading about this problem in the notes for this video, same thing. Read the notes, don't read the solution. Try to solve it yourself. Even if you don't solve it, it's still good if you think about it. So, now that's a good place, good, good time to stop the video and think about it. So anyway, so I will continue solving the problem. Let's consider three unit vectors i, j, and k. Unit vectors along the axis. So unit vectors means that its length is equal to 1. So what's the coordinate of vector i? i, its projection on the x is 1 because that's its length. 
Now its projection on y and z are 0 and 0. j similarly. Projection on x would be 0, on y would be 1, and on z 0. And the k vector would be 0, 0, 1. Now, what if I will uh, form a scalar product of v and let's say i? v and i. This is a scalar dot product. Well, it's actually uh, supposed to be, as we know, sum of the product of coordinates. So it would be v1 times 1, v2 plus v2 times 0, plus v3 times 0, which is v1. Same thing, v uh, scalar product with j would be v2, because it's only v2 will be multiplied by 1, and scalar uh, product uh, with uh, k would be v3. So it looks like knowing scalar product, I will know the coordinates. OK, but what is a scalar product? Well, let's say v times i. We know that this is a product of lengths times cosine of the angle between them. So it would be length of v, which is l, times length of i, and this is a unit vector, so its length is equal to 1, times cosine of which angle? between v and i. But i is along the x-axis, so basically that's alpha. So I can say that this is scalar product, the same thing. On one hand it's v1, on the other hand it's L cosine alpha. And that's my answer. This is my v1 coordinate. And very similarly v2 would be L times cosine beta, because the j vector is along y-axis, so the angle between v and j would be the same angle between v and the whole axis y, which is b. So that would be the same, and L cosine gamma would be for the third one. So the coordinates of the vector are always a product of its lengths and the cosine of the angle between the vector and the corresponding axis. So that's it. That's my answer. So we have expressed coordinates in terms of lengths and the cosine. Now, these angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, are often called direction vectors. So every vector has, in three-dimensional space, has three direction angles. Sometimes direction, sometimes directional. Um, doesn't work. Doesn't work really. Okay, that's my first problem. Now, the second one is also relatively simple, although some calculations will be involved. Okay, so what's my third problem? I have a triangle with coordinates of each on the plane, with coordinates of each vertex as a1, a2, b1, b2, and c1, c2. Now, I have to find point x on ab such that this line would divide the ab by point x in the ratio p over q. So that's my problem. Now, um, there are many ways to approach this problem. I will use the vectors. Now, um, if I don't want to use vectors, what can I actually do? Well, I can express the difference between the, the distance between A and B in terms of coordinates. It's like B1 minus A2 squared plus b2 minus b a2 square and uh, plus and, and, and square root of it, try to find point x with some coordinates x1, x2, which also have the lengths and have equation basically 
divide one length to another, it's supposed to be p over q. Yeah, I can do that. But I, it, I, it kind of is involved, all these square roots, etc., too much. So what I'm suggesting is I will do it using the vector algebra. So that's why I put it in the vectors um, category. So I will use these vectors CA, CX, and CB, and AX and XB. And I will basically uh, do exactly the same thing, but using algebra. First of all, sum of vectors CA plus AX is CX, right? CX is equal to CA plus AX. Good. Now, CX plus XB, CX plus XB, CX plus XB would be CB. Now, AX and XB are collinear. I know that their length is in this particular proportion. So let's say AX length divided by length of XB equals to P over Q, or length of AX times Q is equal to length of XB times P, right? So I know that. But since they are collinear, the same equation can be actually applied to vectors, not only um, the lengths of these vectors, because they are going in the same direction. They are collinear, so I can actually write AX as a vector times Q. What does it mean times Q? It's the same vector, uh, length of which is multiplied by, uh, by Q. And xb is a collinear vector, and if I will multiply it, the lengths of it multiplied by p, I would have the same as lengths as ax multiplied by q. So the vectors are equal. So that's xb times p. But basically, I have a system of vector equations with three unknown, cx, ax, and xb. And I have three equations. So basically, that's enough to solve the problem, right? And what's a, what the advantage of this is, it's a linear equation. Because if you will start, again, these square roots of lengths, uh, that, that's too much kind of uh, calculations. This is much simpler. OK, so let's just solve this equation. That's a very simple thing to do. OK, let's take this Cx, which is this and substitute it into this, and we will get rid of Cx, right? So what do we have? We have Ca plus Ax instead of Cx plus Xb equals Cb. And I will express Ax from here as P over Q XB and substitute it to this one. What will I have? I will have CA plus P over Q XB plus XB equals CB. So this is very important thing and what I will do I will simplify it a little bit further so I will put xb times 1 plus p over q xb 1 plus p over q equals CB minus CA, right? CB minus CA. Okay.
or let me put it here divide by 1 plus p over here so we basically have found xb as a vector now this is a vector expression which means it's actually true for each coordinate so if we will have coordinate of this and coordinate of this we will have it basically solution for x1 and x2 expressed in terms of a1 a2 b1 b2, b2, b2 etc okay so let's do it now what is um, the vector xb in uh, coordinates what's what what is the projection of this vector xb onto the x-axis well that's obviously b1 which is projection of point b on the x uh, axis uh, so let's say x-axis is somewhere here so this is x-axis this is y-axis so this is projection of b b1 this is projection of this is x1 right now this is b1 this is uh, uh, b2 sorry and x2 this is a2 and this is a1 so xb xb projection on the x-axis is b1 minus x1 equals 1 plus p over q what is cb cb is from b1 i have to subtract c1 right so b1 minus c1 minus c a c a c c where is a a okay that's uh, a1 minus i have to put minus in between minus a1 minus c1 so basically that's it that's the answer for x1 x1 is equal to well first of all let me just uh, simplify this uh, minus c1 and this is minus minus c1 which is plus so it would be only b1 minus a1 divided by 1 plus p over q so x1 is equal to x1 goes there b1 goes here so it would be b1 minus b1 minus a1 divided by 1 plus p over q which is the same as if I will um, have it the common denominator so let me just q get rid of q here and I will have p plus q and q here and q here now I will use p plus q here so I will have pb1 plus qb1 minus qb1 minus and minus would be plus plus qa1 divided by p plus q which is equal to pb1 plus qa1 divided by p plus q and that's my x1 and x2 would be absolutely similar it would be pb2 plus qa2 divided by p plus q hey what's interesting is i don't have c here right why well for a very simple reason it doesn't really depend on the position of c it depends only on a and b because i'm dividing this a b in proportion of p to q right so I just decided to to complicate the problem a little bit to uh, to show how the vectors can be used instead of some kind of a direct calculations. But basically, what I can do is instead of doing this two-dimensional problem, I can do it in one dimension. Uh, just consider only the projections because if the whole uh, uh, segment AB is divided in proportion P to Q then the projections would be divided in the same proportion because triangles are similar as we see so which means everything is proportional 
if this divided to this length is p to q, then this divided to this is also p to q. And I can consider only a1, x1, and b1, which is just three numbers. So it's very easy to find the x1 if I know that the x1 minus a1 divided by b1 minus x1, a1 divide minus x1 divided by uh, by no, sorry x1 minus a yeah x1 minus a x1 minus a1 divided by um, b1 minus x1 is equal to p over q and solve it for x and you will see exactly the same solution by the way want to try let's try So it would be px1 minus pa1 is equal to pb1 minus px1. So px1 goes here. I will have px1 x1. So I will have uh, px1 is it's 2px1, right? equals p a1 plus b1 no it should be q right q x1 it's q x1 sorry minus minus q a1 this is a q i have a mistake q x1 minus q a1 is equal to p b1 minus p x1 okay so if x goes here at x1 p plus q uh, p b1 plus q a1 so x1 is equal to p b1 plus q a1 divided by p plus q which is the same thing as this so that would be much easier but again i have decided to complicate the problem a little bit to use the vectors so anyway um, these are two very, very simple problems, and I just wanted to illustrate the usage of vectors in certain cases. Um, so, in this particular, the last one, you, s you saw the system of three equations with three unknown, where unknowns are actually vectors. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that the same three equations exist for x coordinate of all the components of all the vectors involved and for y components or if it's a three-dimensional it would be x y and z one two and three whatever so again vector components uh, ve vector equations are actually uh, converted transformed into corresponding equations for its components and that's what's very very, very important in this particular case because all the equations are linear and if it's a linear equations for vectors, it actually follows from here that these are the same linear equations for each coordinate. Okay, that's it. Uh, what I suggest you to do, if you didn't do it yet, read the notes for this lecture. So you go to unizor.com, choose the course Math Plus and Problems. The category is Vectors, and this is the vector number 03 um, lecture in this particular category read the notes again read only the problems and try to solve it yourself and not just solve it but write down your solution on uh, as a text and try to do it as rigorously as possible so all the statements which you are making in writing that's very important in plain language whatever language you're using um, try to do it in such a way that everything is absolutely rigorous there is no way for somebody to to ask you why you put why like a is equal to b because it's given or it's proportional or something like this so i'm very much suggesting you to to write the solutions your own solutions maybe it's different from this one and there are different solutions by the way obviously so try to write your own solution in writing and that's very very helpful to organize your thoughts because it uh, basically helps you to develop the way to very logically 
explain yourself. It's like you are a lawyer and you are on some kind of a trial and uh, and, and you have to, uh, for instance, uh, protect your, your client from some unfair um, accusation. So you have to really explain why this particular person is not guilty, right? And that takes a lot of logic and the uh, ability to explain everything um, in such a way that uh, people in, in jury, for instance, will understand it and will agree with you. That's what's very important. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.